The Walrus and the Carpenter by Lewis Carroll. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright. And this is odd, because it was the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulkily because she thought the sun had no business to be there after the day was done. It's very rude of him, she said, to come and spoil the fun. The sea was wet as wet could be. The sands were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. The birds were flying overhead. There were no birds to fly. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything to see in such quantities of sand. Well, this was clear away, they said. It would be grand. If seven maids with seven mops would add it for half a year, do you suppose, the walrus said, that they could get it clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and shed a bitter tear. Oh, oysters, come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do with more than four to give a hand at each. The illustrator looked at him, but never a word he said. The illustrator winked his eye and shook his heavy head. He may say he did not choose to leave the oyster bed. But free wishes hurried up or eager for the treat. The coats were brushed, the faces washed, the shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd because, because you know, they hadn't any feet. And, and four other wishes followed them, and yet another four. And thick and fast, they came at last more and more and more, all hopping through the frothy waves and scrambling to shore. And, and the walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock conveniently low. When all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the war said, to talk of many things. Of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings. And why it seems boiling hot and whether things have wings. But wait a bit, the oysters cried, before we have a chat. For some of us are out of breath and all of us are afraid. No hurry, said the carpenter. Thanked him much for that. A loaf, a loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Papara and vinegar, besides, are very fine indeed. No, if you're ready, oysters, dear, we shall begin to feed. But not at us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After such kindness, that would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the walrus said. You admire the view. It was so kind for you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing but, cut us another slice. I wish you weren't quite so deaf. I've had to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick. After we made them trot so after we brought them out so far and made them trot so quick. The carpenter said nothing but, the butter spread much so dick. I weep for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs and tears, he sorted out those of the largest size, holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Oh, oysters, said the carpenter. You've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trying to home again? But the answer came there none. And this was seriously on because they'd eaten everything.